employment did you have prior to your stroke? Prior to my stroke, I was the principal of a primary school. So I was a teacher for about 29 years. Then I suffered the stroke. When did you suffer the stroke and how did it affect you? I suffered the stroke in the end of 2019. As far as the effect, I had left side hemiplegia, which is a partial paralysis of my left hand side. I had dysarthria, which affected my speaking. But the one area that affected me the most, but was less obvious to other people, was the emotional effect. The emotional turmoil and up and down that I followed straight after the stroke. Do you think it's too hard to work following a stroke? Personally, I had no choice. Emotionally and physically, I was in no position to go back to work. I couldn't walk, I couldn't speak. There was no way I could carry my duties as a principal of a school under those conditions. How did you cope with your changing circumstances? At the beginning, I'll be honest, I didn't cope. I was at my lowest level that I've ever been in my life. I had dark thoughts. I couldn't sleep at night. I felt trapped in a body that just wouldn't listen. I couldn't move. I couldn't communicate clearly. I was in a mess, both physically and emotionally. So at the beginning, I didn't cope at all. I remember being in hospital during the rehab phase and cheating on every activity. I hated everybody, hated myself, and just blamed the world for what had occurred to me. But slowly, I realized that it wasn't the end. I could achieve, and then I started slowly but slowly increasing my participation. And as I had increased success, I continued to put more effort into my uh, exercise regime and that helped me get a, a more positive mindset and I just continued to move on from there. What was the most significant impact on your daily life? Travelling, movement. At the beginning when I left hospital, I had limited movement. And they sent me home with a wheelchair and a walking stick. The first few days were terrible. Then I thought, stuff this, stop using the wheelchair, threw the cane away and started hobbling around. I, I felt that although it looked terrible, I was succeeding, I was doing something on my own and I wasn't dependent on any assistance. So movement, traveling, I couldn't drive. So that was my biggest impact as well as the emotional roller coaster. That was hard, it still continues to be hard today. On any given day, I could be up and the next minute, I'd be down and sad about something irrelevant. But I quickly get back to where I am and I'm trying to cope with that as best as I can. I'm able to get assistance for my physical disability, so to say, to speak. But as far as the emotional, it's been a long challenge, a long, a frustrating challenge, but we're getting on top of it slowly. What is the biggest stereotype associated with having a stroke that you'd like to address and squash? Well, there are two. One is my own perception, and the other is the community perception. I'll start with the community perception first. People look at you, and the term disability comes straight to their heads. They don't realise that it's an injury rather than a disability. In their attempt to help you, they're kind of wrapping you up in cotton wool and not allowing you to do things. They try to overprotect you and their way limit your, I guess, your independence. From a personal perspective, I hated myself. I hated everybody. I hated the world, I blamed everybody. I kept on asking, why me, why me? What did I do wrong, why am I going through this? So my perception was that I was half a person. I wasn't a full person. And you quickly realise 
then you are the same person, just facing a few extra challenges. And if you can get on top of those challenges, your daily life will be similar to where it was before. And who you will be depending on you and your attitude. What's your favourite form of exercise? Sitting down talking. <laughs> no, on a serious note, I like the pool sessions, but I think the one I get the most satisfaction out of is doing something that I've struggled to do and I'm able to emotionally, mentally fight through it and be able to achieve it. So it could be anything, although I hate legs, but I hate, uh, but I like, sorry, doing activities with the legs that I'm succeeding in doing something I wasn't able to do previous session. What does your rehabilitation look like and how has it changed? My rehab is my life at the moment. I started off, once I left hospital, doing my own thing. I was going to the pool every day. And although I was making slight progress, emotionally it was the best thing for me. But then NDIS started helping me with my exercise physiology. I started off with one day a week. I had my first session. It was really good, I really enjoyed it. I felt like I was exercising for the first time in a long time. Then the next week, a different person came to her, help me with my exercise. She absolutely destroyed me in that session. When I say destroy, in a good way. She pushed me. I started achieving things that I wasn't able to achieve. And I started to perspire. For the first time in about six months, I felt normal. So we went from one day to two days, to three days, to four days, to five days. We're currently working five days a week, looking at things like my walking. We do a pool session where after originally being hesitant to float in the water, I'm starting to swim again. We do gym sessions focusing on targeted areas of the body, be it the legs, be it the arms. And basically we're looking at all aspects of my body now and although it's supposed to be exercise the person I'm working with is able to identify my emotional needs as well so sometimes she knows when I don't have the I guess the ability to finish off a session so we'll sit there and have a talk about what we are doing so I'm starting to understand why I'm doing things and the stepping stones involved in the rehab. Whereas before, I started thinking purely on the end result. So the process was all over the place. I was making mistakes which affected other parts of my body. Now we are, I'm understanding why I'm doing every activity and how it's connected to the previous activity and the following activity. So besides daily exercise, how else do you keep yourself occupied? Coffee, lunch, dinners with friends. I'm also involved with a football club, a soccer club. Um, I've been involved with them for the last six years. And through the soccer club, we organise the Stroke Recovery Cup, which is played annually. The aim of the cup is to raise awareness of stroke. We um, aim to help stroke victims gain a clear understanding of what the rehab is all about, but also, more importantly, helping families of stroke victims gain a greater understanding of what their loved one is going through. I'm also involved in a website, um, focusing on stroke recovery, as well as a YouTube channel on stroke recovery, as well as a YouTube channel where I'm creating exercise videos for those people who have gone through straight recovery. And that keeps me quite busy. A word of advice for those suffering with the effects of stroke. Advice. It's a little bit difficult to give people advice because individual people have individual challenges and stroke affects people differently. But if I was to give advice is never give up Keep on fighting for things that are important to you. Don't judge yourself compared to other people. 
and finally focus on a Japanese saying which is Keizan, meaning small, seemingly insignificant, yet ongoing improvement. Thanks so much, John, for sharing your story with us. Pleasure. Have a great day.